Haridwar, a sanctuary for Hindus and one of the seven holiest cities in India. Located on the riverbanks of the holy Ganga Maya, the city known as a gateway to God. Hey guys, welcome back to Naili by Nature. Our next stop brings us to Haridwar, a deeply spiritual place for Hindus all over. I'm Sadia. I've been on this journey with Naili and I'm usually the one behind the camera. This is my account of our experience in one of the holiest cities here in India. During our three days here, we contemplated God, Ma, and what our connection to her is. Before we came to India, we wanted to experience an ashram for deeper spiritual connection through meditation and most importantly, to seek answers. Answers we hoped we could find in the great Hindu gurus who have ashrams all over India. We looked into Sri Ramana Maharishi's ashram in Tiruvamalai. We looked into the world-renowned ashrams of Rishikesh. But a friend we met along the way suggested we come to Haridwar to stay in Sri Anandmai's ashram for her birthday celebrations. So far, we have allowed the path to lead the way. It's more important for us to flow with the universe. So when we came to the sacred city for Hindus, we dove right in with the beautiful Ganga Arti. This ceremony is held every day to honor the holy river. The water from the Ganga is said to have purifying properties and can cleanse your soul and absolve you of all your sins. The experience of just walking through the crowds, watching this convergence of humanity as Hindus travel from all over the world to pay respects to the holy Ganga Maya. This river is no longer just a river. It is an entity to be worshipped. I always found the ways that Hindus worship to be beautifully symbolic. Their devotion carries symbolic weight. They offer milk, money, flowers. They offer so much to their gods, and in return, they feel their gods' blessings. I wonder if God hears them. Sometimes I struggle with feeling heard by God. But I realize more than that, it's their belief that God is answering their prayers, that gives Hindus a sense of validation, that their prayers are in fact being heard. And it is through those rituals you see that God is inherent in everything. It's why Hindus bow when greeting another human. They are in fact bowing to their inner God. We visited the Mansa Devi Temple, located atop the Bilwa Parvat on the Sivalik Hills. The goddess Mansa Devi is a form of Shakti and emerged from the minds of Lord Shiva. It is believed that at the Mansa Devi temple, all your wishes will be fulfilled. Here people line up with their offerings so that they can receive her blessings, leaving their prayers with Mansa Devi, knowing that she will take care of it. As I kneeled in front of the shrine, I asked for her strength so that I could keep on going. And at that moment, I needed all the strength to fortify my own sense of belief. On our last night in Haridwar, we attended Ma's birthday celebration. Sri Ma Anandmayi is considered one of the great Hindu saints of India. Originally from Bangladesh, the mythology surrounding her grew to epic proportions due to the incredible instances of magic that Ma exhibited. They call her Ma, or mother, because she never required a teacher. She just intuitively knew how to reach enlightenment. She was her own guru. Every year, her followers commune together at her Haridwar ashram to celebrate her birthday. During our time at her ashram, I found that I was skeptical more than anything else. I never doubted that she was a powerful being. I doubted whether someone could be so special that they could be venerated in this way. And yet, I found myself here. I'm not saying I completely understand these acts of devotion, but I acknowledge the beauty in their devotion. It's unquestionable. It's an emotionally impactful experience for each and every one of Ma's followers. One of their yearly rituals includes finding a young girl that is touched by Ma's spirit. They bless her, and in that moment they touch her feet, she is the epitome of Ma, the closest they will ever get to her physical form since she left her body in 1982. And as the sun rose, we walked away from this experience understanding one thing. And it's that you have to choose your practice of devotion and you have to commit yourself to it. And in that way, you will never feel like your prayers go unanswered.